thought possible about fire. Now everybody here knows about the good old, let's start a fire. We take our, our paper, we crumple it up. We take our kindling and you know, we take our kindling and we pile it on top and we light it with a match and the wood stove burns. Yeah. Okay, pretty straightforward, but that's not what I'm that's not what I'm teaching. We're going to do that kind of fire. I brought some paper that needs to be burnt, but we're not actually, that's not going to be, the, that'll be the first fire you light, and we're going to work through the different types. Now everybody knows a match or a lighter. Mm -hmm. So this is my fire lesson kit, and I don't think the lid will go down any farther, so, but it doesn't really matter. So there's all kinds of different ways to light a fire. Um, as we discussed, or I mentioned already, we have our typical book of paper matches that everybody knows and loves. Now, some people will tell you the one good thing about a book of matches is if you have a knife, I try to avoid cutting into these tables, and you have a patience one thing that you can do is if you get lucky you can turn one match into two but they don't always light so it's a bit of a risk as you can see so some matches you can split in half and they'll both light sometimes they don't so keep that in mind And unfortunately, one thing I don't like about paper matches is they get wet and they're no good. So the next thing we have are, we do have regular matches. I didn't bring them out here, like wooden ones. But then we have these guys. And these are fire, uh, or sorry, windproof matches. Um, Yeah, they're, they're really stinky, but... Some of those in our bathroom. <laughs> can't blow them out. So windproof matches. However, they stink, as you can smell, and they don't necessarily... Or they're not necessarily waterproof. You can waterproof a match by dipping it in paraffin wax. And then it's, and that used to be a thing that the Cub Scouts would, would do as a project. That was at least until I got kicked out of the Cub Scouts. Okay. <laughs> well, I lived, I lived in a place called Quetzino, which is only boat accessible, so I did all the uh, badges myself, and I did them too quickly, and they said, yeah, you're done. <laughs> you don't have to come to the next meeting, and that was it. So, matches. Everybody's familiar with matches. <laughs> Everybody's familiar with lighters. This one doesn't actually work. It's just in here for show. This is a jet lighter though. Um, so it's more windproof. Um, yeah, it's, it's just completely empty. <laughs> What's nice about them is that they can be windproof and they can be waterproof. Now I'm gonna teach you how to light a fire with nothing more than a flint and steel in the rain, in the wind. Um, however, that's not necessarily, do, do I do that every time I light a fire? No, I'm going to light a fire as quickly as possible, if it, especially if it's an emergency situation. Nobody wants you to sit there with a bow drill making a fire if somebody's you know, suffering from hypothermia. <coughs> in fact, one thing they teach us in the Rangers, that is the fastest way to get a fire going, especially if you have equipment around, like an ATV or a snowmobile, is open the gas tank, drop a tampon in there, pull it out, gasoline, woof, fire. Person doesn't freeze to death and die. So there's lots of options. Now moving up into the ignition source side, of course we come, I don't have a compression ignition because I gave that away, but uh, 
try to make one before the year is up and show you. But we can go to the good old flint steel. All right, so there's different types of flint steel. Um, so there's the ferrocinium rod. That is your, uh, your man-made flint steel. And a good striker is don't use your knife because it destroys your knife. This stuff is so hot it'll melt holes in the very edge of your blade. But it makes sparks. All right. The other option is a magnesium um, bar. What you do is you scrape off the magnesium with your knife, which also dulls it, which I don't like doing. And you can sort of do it with a hacksaw blade. You make a pile of magnesium, and then you light it with the flint on the, or the, the ferro rod on the other side. Um, this, of course, used to be glued in there, but they're cheap and they fall apart. Um, don't buy these North 49 or Coogans or Woods. They're just junk. Um, this is what the school could afford. Uh, if you really want to get a good flint and steel, buy what's called a Swedish steel from um, Lee Valley. They put off way more sparks. That's what I have in my actual kit. Um, and they're just way better. Now, I said traditional flint and steel. Well, I just so happen to have a traditional flint and steel that you would see trappers and voyagers and explorers back in the day have and that's all it is. And what they would do is they would just you see how little spark comes off. It makes you wonder how those compare that to this. It makes you wonder how they survive. But they were very good. Actually I'm going to show you how they survived. And so you can see the difference. And I'll show you why there's a difference. Now, if you want to get a fire going, there's also one other way. And this is a real survival technique. People have used this. So we all have these devices called cell phones. Cell phones have batteries. You can bust one of those open, pull out a battery. Here's my battery. And you get yourself some triple aught OOO steel wool steel battery this battery is getting kind of dull no. <laughs> that's very very hot okay that'll get a fire going and you can um, you could tease that out in, into a long strip and connect it to your car battery to get it going if you needed to um, I'm just gonna toss that down it does mm. not work with regular steel wool okay it just there isn't enough it's it's not going to get it burning it you might get lucky but you can see that it does not really work so those are the different ways to get ignition and then there's friction ignition by friction with the bow drill and we'll bring that out another day and give everybody a crack at it. we're going to focus primarily on spark ignition because that's the most reliable there's nothing it still works if it's wet it still works if it is uh, windy it's it always works so that's what we're gonna focus on um, now how do you so are we, we talked about getting a paper fire going and that's how everybody will start um, today just getting a fire going with uh, you know, today's big lesson is going to be learning how to prepare your materials but I do want to talk a little bit about different ways to get a fire going if you're if you're doing it a traditional way you need a fire bundle now a fire bundle consists of tinder that some people call a rat's nest as well but it consists of tinder and it consists of something that can burn uh, the tinder gets going the bundle burns and then you get your you get your uh, your kindling going with that. But part of your tinder bundle is going to be little pieces like this. All right, you're going to have a bunch of pieces like this in your tinder bundle. All right, we call those toothpicks. So different ways to get a tinder bundle going. Well, a bunch of dried grass, a big wad of dried grass works. 
One of my favorite ways to get in a fire going when I get out to the west coast is I'll go along the beach and I'll just break off all the little dead sticks, you know, that are sticking out from the 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 um, salmonberry bushes and stuff. They're really dry from the wind as long as it hasn't been raining. They make a great bundle. Um, the next great bundle is cedar bark, and cedar is going to be my focus because you can, if you walk, there isn't really any place in the North Island that you can walk where you can't walk within walking distances some sort of red cedar. Um, as long as you've got red cedar, you can get a fire going. Um, because red cedar, even if it's damp, will burn because it has a resin in it, which is very handy. Now, how do you find dry cedar? Well, you find a cedar log, especially something that's dead and standing, like a snag or something that's maybe elevated off the bottom uh, or the ground of the forest. But uh, on a ranger exercise, we once flew out in hurricane force weather, mind you, to Lawn Point. It was blowing sideways with rain, and I still managed to get a fire going. We found an old chunk of driftwood on the beach, split it in the center. It's above the high tide line, and it was dry inside just like this. All right, the outside, you know, layer was wet, but the inside was dry, and that's what you want. So you, you go underneath a tree, you'll find dry bark in a forest, especially on, on a cedar tree. So you peel that, uh, where's my bark bin? Did I, oh man, did I forget it in the classroom? No, I didn't. So you, all you gotta do is find some red cedar bark like this, peel a chunk off. You don't have to peel right to the cadmium layer of the tree where it's exposed. You just need the outer part. And all you need to do with your knife is just fluff this up. All these little tiny dry fibers are going to catch on fire quite easily. Okay? Very easily. And you make yourself a bundle like this. Okay? So that's your bundle. But what are you going to use now? You might be able to get that I could probably get that going with a flint and steel as well. But I want to have a tinder in there. Um, I mean, that'll work as a tinder if it's dry enough, but like I said, I want something tinder. So some options for tinder, all right? Uh, the, the, one of the most common that you can find uh, hanging in trees and it's dry is old man's beard. This is a, or lichen, or lichen, depending on how you want to pronounce it. That's what we have on the North Island here, is this stuff. Um, if you go into the interior, you'll actually, you, you'll find, there, there, theirs looks like this. So this is like for, uh, this was brought back from Mackenzie. Different color, much finer too. It's, it's it's much better. And of course, the reason for it's why it's finer is because they have a shorter growing season there because of the cold, whereas we have a much larger growing season uh, or longer one, so everything grows bigger and taller. Another option is jute twine. All right, what's cool about jute twine is you can carry a wad of this in your pocket, or well, keep it so it's dry. Okay, it comes off of a roll like this that you buy at the hardware store. You cut pieces off like this. Okay, and you peel these pieces and you just pull them apart. And you get yourself all these fine hairs. This will light, this will take a spark and ignite faster than you can actually do something with it. That's why you need to have a tinder bun. We'll just go gone, poof, in a second. So you get a bunch like this, and this can be both a tinder bundle and a um, and tinder, like a, like a rat's nest or a, uh, a bundle. But usually you put something inside that, that's going to really help you out. We're going to get to where I'm going with that. But if you can get this, you can get this going with a spark, no problem, guaranteed. I'll show you. It's, uh, this, this will not take much at all. In fact, I wonder if I can do it with this one. You can see where one burned. The, this is really clumsy. I don't like it. But I have it. I'll show you. But this, I guarantee you, just like that. But see how fast you gotta work with it? Gone. So that's why I like to combine it with this. This will burn slowly. 
So dryer lint's also another good one. Cheap, free, you can mix it with wax. Um, one of my, I remember I to told you about these candles that you can make? So if we tweeze up that, I don't want to catch this on fire because I want to keep that in my kit just for, that's just my show off thing. I want you to notice, by the way, I don't, when I'm trying to actually light something, I pull the striker away. Because what you do is you go like this, and you, and you move your stuff. Now we have to have a very, we want to try and get some very fine hairs. This is all, oh, there we go. So now we got a little candle. And that will burn for a while, and the more you tease out, the bigger it'll get. You could make something like this, you could, you could heat a little uh, shelter with the, with that. It's going to go out because it didn't pull very much out. But if you pull back the tin foil, and I've lit it too many times as well, so there's not as much. You can, you can get a fire going like that. You can also get a fire going just by lighting a candle and building your fire over top. It'll burn and it'll keep burning for an extended period of time. So why not, right? Now... We get into some more interesting stuff. We have this stuff here. Some people like to pack with them. It is cotton cloth, and it is, uh, uh, it's not very good because it doesn't smell. It's, it's um, called Never Doll, and you use it to clean like um, silverware and stuff. But it's covered in mineral spirits, so it lights pretty easy. Um, and but it doesn't last long again, so you got to work fast or get into a tinder bundle. Um, you might get a fire going at that, but probably not. So we'll just toss that off. So that brings us to we covered dryer lint. Is that a bottle cap container? Yep. Um, I'll bring in uh, the chemical stuff too. I can show you how to get a fire going with two chemicals. This is my go-to. If I gotta get a fire going quickly, and I don't have a lot of stuff, um, I'm gonna use this guy. Uh, the reason why, you gotta, have a, you gotta have a flame. You can't get this going with spark. But if you get an inner tube going, it's gonna burn and it's gonna get a fire going. This is an emergency though, I'm not, it's not good for the environment, but again, if somebody's life's on the line, got to get a fire going, this would be my go-to. Get this burning, it'll burn slow and hot until I get a fire going around it. So keep that in mind, that's something that you should always consider. Now we're going to come to my favorite and what I consider to be the absolute best way to get a fire going, and that is char cloth. This is what the old explorers, the voyageurs, carried. They'd have a little, they'd have a little, little metal tin that they'd carry on their person with their flint, with their steel, and a bunch of this char cloth. So this char cloth is like charcoal. It's 100% cotton. That's the only thing that works. It has to be 100% cotton, and it takes a spark. Once it takes a spark, it'll burn until you put it out. But when you, it'll burn slow, gives you time. And then when you blow on it, it's like, a, like charcoal on the fire. It gets really hot. It'll get anything going. So you can get it going with traditional flint. If you can get a spark to land on it. Some people would, some voyagers and stuff, they would, they would hold it. They try to hold it like that. But I find that that to be clumsy. But all you got to do, and I'm getting, this stuff isn't very good. We're going to make some, some better stuff. But once it's burning, you'll know. But you can see it when you blow on it. It, blows very, it burns very slowly right now. As soon as I blow, gets bright red and orange and that'll get anything going so what you want to do though is this is dangerous so is tossing that I can toss that into here and then I can blow if 
I wrap this around, then I can blow. And it's just about ready to go. What I like to carry is a little piece of leather and put it in the leather and I can't burn my fingers. And there you have fire. Nice and slow burning. Gives you time to do what you gotta do. <laughs> and you're not rushing around. Now, the other thing too is, is that you can carry it. You can put it out if you need to. Because maybe you realized, oh, I'm just about out of stuff. I need to stop and wait. So that's, that's part of my go-to. So char cloth and flint and steel, and you're gonna be successful. Now, let's talk about the unwritten rule of what do you need? You got your tinder bundle, you've got your tinder, you're gonna get you know you're gonna be successful getting that together. What do I do now? How do I do this? Now you need to make sure you have enough enough material. The most common mistake people make in survival situations or even just camping is they'll get a fire going and then they'll realize I don't have enough stuff to keep it going. So you gotta gather what you need, gather what you think you need, and then triple it. You need a number of things. So just like that video we saw yesterday, we wanna start. Now these are the little hatchets I made for the course. We're just going to, that's called batoning. We're not gonna be swinging these things, but we get ourselves a piece of cedar. Now what I like to do is I like it to work backwards. So to get a fire going to be 100% successful, I believe you need the following stages of wood. You need dry, dry starter wood. This is not your full big chunk you're going to burn all night long, but you're going to have a whole bunch of this. It's dry or dry-ish. You're going to have your, what do you call it? Kindling? It's, kindling is a generic term. Some people use it for like, that's it. But you want so We want, first of all, we want, our first thing we want to put on that tinder bundle is toothpicks. Add it, that is the largest I want to put on that tinder bundle. Absolute largest. All right. I might, depending on how dry things are and how wet things are, I might make a, a bunch of curly cues. So what, I don't know what else to call these things. But stuff like this might go on that tinder bundle. But definitely that's my first stage of wood, a toothpick. Then I'm going to go to um, well I'll go with I'll go with pencil size. Okay? Some people call it chopstick size. Um, then we're gonna go with what you would traditionally call kindling which would be stuff a little bit bigger. Then I'm going to start getting into um, thumb size. Uh, you know, your thumb is a generic term because everybody's thumb is different. But I want stuff that's about, you know, getting a bit fatter. There is some variation between, you know, but pencil, sorry, at least toothpick, pencil, thumb, and then you want to start getting into chunks and then your wood. That's the progression we want to go through here. Okay? So you're going to start with your bundle. You're going to dump that out on, into your fire pit. Then you're going to start pile, put a pile of those on top. You don't want to smother it. And then you're going to move on to your next step. 
So, today we're going to skip the toothpicks and the, the chopsticks because we're going to try to get a fire going. Some people may have never have started a fire before. So we're going to start off with just our regular kindling chunks and paper. Now I just want to talk a little bit about the safety of, around preparing your stuff. Now I said I like to work backwards because as I'm, so I, when I go and cut this piece off, a chunk like this might fall off. So I can add that to my, my toothpick pot. And as you're, as you're splitting this into two pieces, this might fall off. So I can add that to the other pot. So I like to work backwards for that reason. So as I showed you, if you're, we're not going to swing axes, okay, we're going to baton them through using a larger chunk, obviously. When we can also do the same thing with this. When it's, time, when it's time to break up these, you have a couple of options. You can use your knife. Everybody's going to get a knife like this. And put them through. We want to be safe. Our fingers are safe. They're nowhere near. The other handy way to do it is you get yourself a little block. And you can just... A couple of those. And then down you go. to make your pieces. Well, we don't want to have any wild movements. All right, we're not swinging any chair axes. Okay, we're forehand grip. If there's no one around, backhand grip if we're cutting string with somebody, and our chest lever grip if we're working close to our body for, for, for control, power, and we're not moving very far at all. Those are our three things. That's one of the things we learned yesterday. Well, you wanted to go outside. And here we are. Now, the last thing to mention before I am going to light a fire and just demonstrate for anybody who may never have done one before um, is the different types of fire lays. And there's all kinds of different types of fire lays. All right, the main ones that I think are are worthy of mention. Of course, everybody knows the TP. You know, you put your paper underneath and you build up a little teepee. Alright. It's got its, its, its good points and bads. Um, you know, it, can, it, can, it might be quick to do, it might not be quick. And the wind can be, be a problem. There's the lean to, where you put a block of wood, you put the tinder and stuff underneath, the fire comes up and burns. All right, there's the build between two objects fire, okay? And then you build your fire in here uh, so that the wind, it shields it from the wind. There's also the log cabin method. You start with large pieces and then you build it up with, with progressively smaller stuff. And so there's a variation of this where you build it like a pyramid where they get smaller and smaller inwards as you go. All right, it really depends on the ground you're on, the weather, what, what you prefer. I like the lean-to style myself, but I'm gonna be the TP method because it'll work best with today's scenario. Any questions right now? It's 250 right now. It's what? It's 250 right Thank now. Thank you. So what we're going to do is I'm going to light a very basic fire. This is, this is most of the time that's how I process my firewood. That's because my hands are pretty uh, pretty rough. Callousy and I'm not too worried about anything. I'm hitting the spine of the knife, which isn't uh, a dangerous thing, but if you can't smack it, use your uh, use your baton. So that's what I need. Yeah. <laughs> 
Going everywhere. <laughs>